and I have closed the window for you guys here and it's kind of hot today in Portland. 82, but very stuffy inside. Um, and I might start sweating at the end of this. Hey bros, welcome back. We're gonna do some uh, character names, so join me. We've got our Lan Lan Qi and Hui Wu Xian, so let's see if we can figure out together how these characters' uh, names are written and pronounced and their meanings behind them. I guess I should definitely preface this video by saying that this will not be spoiler free. This is not a spoiler free zone. If you either haven't read the books or the manhua or the donghua, the anime, um, yeah, just, just be warned. Um, I will be revealing things about the characters, um, especially with given their names, so um, not a spoiler free zone. So we've got Mo Dao Zi Shi. Mo Dao Zi Shi. So Mo means magic, demon or demonic, evil. Um, Dao means way or path. Zi means like ancestor, founder, or grandparent. And then Shi is teacher or master. So then if you take mo dao, mo dao, put them together, you'll get like the demonic way. And then if you put zu shi together, you get like the founder. So in particular, the founder of a school of learning. So that is where we get the grandmaster of demonic cultivation from. That is that translation. So this mo actually contains the character gui. So that means like demon, ghost, spirit. And that kind of makes sense, right? With the way that, um, with the meaning of the character. Um, but we'll actually see that again in Wei Wuxian's name. So moving on, we are going to go to our protagonist, Wei Wu Xian. And so we've got simplified on top and traditional on bottom. Um, again, Chinese has both traditional and simplified forms. I personally have studied uh, traditional because it's a bit closer to Japanese. Um, and I am half Japanese, so I did grow up learning some kanji. Um, but when I was in college, I took two years of uh, traditional Chinese, and that's kind of where my strengths lie. Uh, you'll see that simplified is used in mainland China, while traditional is used in Taiwan. Um, I guess I should I guess I should go over the fact that there are four tones in Chinese. So we've got first tone, second tone, third tone, and then fourth tone. And then technically, we've got no tone as well. So kind of think of it as four tones and then not having one. Uh, you can check out my other video and see the explanation there, but I'll probably try to copy paste a little bit of that here and we'll see we'll see what makes the cut, right? God, it's fucking hot. So as far as I can tell, Wei Wei is just a general last name. But from above we saw that this radical actually has meaning outside of this word, gui. So we know that this is demon, ghost, or spirit. So it's really got some foreshadowing in his, um, in his last name that um, he will be of demonic nature. And then wu means without, and then xian is envy. So his name is literally without envy, um, which I think is pretty, pretty poetic, very, very pretty. And then he's also known as, or I guess that's his courtesy name, right? And, but his given name is Wei Ying. So we've got the Wei from before, 
And then we've got simplified yin on top and then traditional on bottom. Yin means baby or infant. So almost kind of like a demonic baby, but I don't know if that's special. I don't know if that means anything. I guess you could almost see this as this is the way that he was born, a baby without anything. And then when he grows up, he's got his courtesy name. And he really does exemplify this without envy uh, characteristic quite well throughout a lot of a lot of the novel and a lot of his character. So moving on, we've got his title. So Yiling Lao Zi, or sorry, this is Yiling Lao Zi. So actually when you've got two third tones, the, the first one will actually become second tone. So here, this will actually change and it will be going up to second tone. Yiling Lao Zi. So Yi means to praise, it also means barbarians, to wipe out, exterminate, tear down. Ling is like hill or mound. Lao means old. And then we've got Zhu from before, which is ancestor, founder, grandparent. And so if you take the first two characters together, Yi Ling, you actually get barbarian mounds or burial mounds. And then if you take the second two characters and put them together, that's where we get Patriarch or Founder from. And that is where we get the Yiling Patriarch from. Um, but really, right, he comes from the burial mounds. He's taken the Wen, the remnants of the Wen clan, and they've gone to the burial mounds and he kind of becomes their protector, right? And then finally, we've got his flute, Chun Qing. So chun means to lay out, put on display, or to tell. And then qing means like feeling, emotion, or passion. So literally to put on display your feelings or emotions. And then lastly for Wei Wu Xian's portion, we have Mo Xian Yu. Mo Xian Yu. So this is our body, right? That Wei Wu Xian actually wakes up in. So mo means is not or do not, something negative. I also found a translation of there is none who. Shen, as we've seen before, is black, dark, mysterious. I believe it also means profound as well. Yu means feather or wings. Yeah, you can kind of like see the wings, right? I don't know if that necessarily describes who he is. I think Mo and Xuan definitely you. Mysterious feathers, black feathers, black wings. He's kind of the black sheep of the family, right? He's, pr he's practicing demonic cultivation and seen as an outcast. Um, he's also, you know, a bastard child of Jing Guangshan. So then next up, we've got our best boy, Lan Wanqi. His characters are very interesting and very fun. We've got his simplified on top, his traditional on bottom. So Lan means blue. Yes, that is a lot of strokes for a simple character. Don't ask me why. Wang means to forget. And then Ji means machine. Like a cell phone is literally a hand machine. Shou Ji. I think is pretty cool. When you put Wang Qi together, it means to forget worldly things. This actually is a Taoist phrase and it means to be free of worldly concerns. Other connotations can be above the fray or being at peace with the world, which I think seems to describe La Wang Qi. Um, looking out for his juniors, he's always going where, um, whenever there's trouble, wherever there's chaos, wherever he's needed. Um, he doesn't care about glory and honor, he just cares about helping the common people, right? The highest, um, the best, what is it called? The most honorable and righteous, so. So we've got his courtesy name, La Wang Qi, and now we've got his birth name, Lan Chan. So again, from before, we've got Lan meaning blue, and then Jun means profound or deep. 
clear, specifically like water, referring to water, got a water radical here. So we know that it's um, having to do or relating with water. And then when you actually put these together, you'll actually get like clear blue or azure. And then we've got his title, right? Han Guangjun. So Han means to keep, to contain, or to hold in the mouth, if you know what I'm talking about. If you know, you know. Um, but that's, uh, that's neither here nor there. And then Guang means light or bright. And then Jun is lord or gentleman. So he is the bearer of light. And then we'll go through his weapons slash instruments. So first you've got his sword, Bi Chun. And I really do laugh every time I see this, um, whether written or whatever, because I remember when I was reading the translated copy of the books, um, the translator had made a note and was like, this is not pronounced bitchin. And I think about this every time now. B means to avoid, to shun, to flee, to escape from, or to hide from. And then chun is like dust, dirt, or the earth. Um, we, we can see this since it's got the earth radical. And it, it has to do with, like when you see that, you know it has to do with of the earth, of the ground. Um, so it's, again, Chinese is very pictor- uh, started out with like pictographs, pic you know, what are they called? Not hieroglyphs, I guess they are pictographs, and then they became characters. And I remember looking at those in textbooks um, that my mom had bought when she was trying to force Japanese down my throat, so that's always fun. Memories, right? So then his zither his guqin is actually just called wangji which is the same as his name as his courtesy name and this is his guqin sorry guqin so this is a seven stringed zither oh while i'm on the topic i could totally do his tian zi xiao so tian means heaven zi is means child and then xiao means to smile or to laugh and that is where we get the translation for Emperor's Smile. So I just wanted to take a brief moment, moment, wanted to take a brief moment and talk about like titles. Lan Wangqi is also referred to as Lan Kuangzu. We see this very often. I'm pretty familiar with these type of titles and suffix, suffixes, I guess you could say. Um, I would call them titles though, or maybe honorifics, um, but I actually read a really good AO3 article, I guess, it wasn't, it wasn't a fanfic, it was an explanation, so an AO3 explanation about this, and I will definitely link that here, um, because it actually went through kind of like Shiji and Shishong, um, and all those differences really well, so I won't really spend that much time going through it, but, um, just wanted to give a few things here. So we've got Lan Kongzi. So that's like young master. Um, you can always think of that as like Bochama in Japanese, but so here it will be young master. So typically they were given as like this Kongzi was given as like you are the son of a duke or the son of someone important, which I guess in, in this anime, they're all sons of someone important or another. So I guess it kind of makes sense, but it's also like a polite way of addressing um, someone. So then we've also got Lanar Goga um, or Lanar Ga. So that is just an informal and I guess in Wei Wuxian's case, playful way of saying second brother Lan. So we've got this from before. R means two. So one, two, three, four, etc. I could do a whole nother video on that, but I'm sure you can just look it up on the internet somewhere. And then Gu means older brother. So this actually becomes second brother Lan. Um, but I guess literally it would be second older brother Lan, since Gu does have the implications of being for an older brother. Um, and he also calls him Lanar Ge, so you're just taking the second Ge off. So same same thing, same difference. Um, still very 
casual and informal way of addressing someone so you're obviously quite close with them and at least you know we wushin was trying to be i don't know how long this video is getting but i assume it is getting reasonably long so we might just get to Chung and call it a day because i'm hot as fuck over here sorry language it's not my fault everyone has like three names so like their courtesy name, their given or name that they're born with, and their title, and their weapons. So we've got Jiang Cheng, aka Purple Dills, aka uh, like Wan Zhan, watch out. Like I do like Jiang Cheng, his little braids on the side of his head, special place in my heart. Jiang means river, Cheng means clear, limpid, to clarify right they've got those clarity bells so that kind of makes sense or to purify um which like kind of makes sense he's very single-minded i forgot to include his traditional characters how do i do this i can do this so we know obviously right he's of the yumengjiang clan so he's got they've got water radicals on everything here so you know it has to do with the water which makes a lot of sense and so he is also known as Jiang Wan Yin. Man, I guess it's true. You you don't use it, you lose it. Use it or lose it, right? That's what my mom always says. Don't tell her though. Don't tell her she was right. And then I'm too lazy to write all his other characters. So you're just gonna get the traditional version of Yin on the bottom. So as before, Jiang means river. Wan means evening. It's like Wan Sheng night or late and then yin means to chant to recite to moan if you know what i'm talking about or to groan and i feel like that last one really resonates with me in particular and his character <laughs> and then so he is also jinling's uncle right so he's actually jinling's jojo and I like have forgotten how to write this, the little top part here, so totally had to look it up and it's still ugly, but at least I wrote the top part in correct stroke order. The bottom part, pretty sure I didn't, but so Jojo. So that means that is uncle, but it is specifically his uh, mother's brother, so maternal uncle. And then we've got his title finally, Sandu Shangshou. San Sandu Sandu Shangshou Sandu Shangshou That is my attempt. It's bad. Okay, so San means three, so we had two earlier, right? R. Then Du means poison. If I can spell poison. I'm 26. I can spell. There's not two eyes in poison. Fuck, that looks correct, and we'll look it up though. <laughs> Um, yes, that is actually the way you spell that word. I went, I, I did go to school, I went to college, I am average, at least, right? Sheng means holy or sacred, saint or sage. Shou means hand. Um, so actually, the three poisons, so this is actually Buddhist phrase for the root of all evil, or sorry, the root of all turmoil which are greed, anger, and ignorance. And I don't know, but if you tell me, Jiang Cheng's kind of got at least uh, two of those for sure. And I mean, maybe maybe the first one too, maybe he's a little greedy, but um, I'm just saying like, I don't know. And then if you put Sheng Shou together, you've actually got skilled practitioners. So the skilled practitioner of the three turmoils, root of all, root of all evils. I don't know. You tell me, but I'm just saying. And then my purple delf daddy is not complete without uh, going over his magical weapon, which is Zi Dian. Um, so Zi, I really like this character. Means purple, Murasaki in Japanese, and then Dian, which means lightning or electricity and yeah he wouldn't be complete without that and i was gonna try to fit in more but i think so i've got one two i've got two pages on the clans and their like headquarters that is not gonna fit in this video 
I also had the juniors in uh, La Chichen, our first brother land, but I don't think that's gonna fit in this. I think we're gonna call it quits here today. Uh, thanks for joining me. I know I was a little bit dispirited at the beginning, so I will, maybe I'll have to do a voiceover um, or maybe I will just have to edit it to sound super perky. I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do. Um, I don't know, a lot of, a lot of life changes specifically in the past few weeks. Um, my brother just came to visit me last week, so I took off work and we had fun running around in Portland. Um, which was fun, but I'm also like, hmm, COVID. So, you know, it is what it is. Thanks for watching. Thanks, bros. And I'll see you next time. And I hope you got something out of this.